Hello. Now you will get an even more difficult problem, and it will be about uh, completing the square for three uh, variables which are not separated in the expression. So it will be uh, much more difficult, but don't worry, you will not need it uh, earlier than to some really hard courses like uh, calculus 3 or uh, linear algebra and geometry 2 or 3. Let's start. Completing the square in three variables. So uh, the, the expression we will work with look like this. Uh, it's, you see that we have three variables, x, y, and z, and we have uh, mixed terms, x, y, x, z, and y, z. By now you know that these are also seen as second-degree terms, exactly as z squared, y squared, and x squared. But here we uh, happened to multiply the same variable which with, uh, uh, with itself, so it is just x times x, and here is x times y, but both of them are seen as a second degree um, operation. And uh, all those a numbers, these are just coefficients. And again, you know that uh, this uh, numeration of the um, you know, this indexing of the uh, coefficients comes uh, from the fact that we usually store them in a matrix. And a matrix will be now a 3 by 3 matrix, and the uh, requirement is that this matrix is symmetric. This means that these two elements are equal to each other, this one is equal to this one, and this one is equal to this one. And uh, this can be uh, briefly uh, uh, written in this way, that A with index IJ is equal to A with index JI. You see, so here is 1, 3, and here is 3, 1. These two elements are equal to each other. And um, instead of uh, thinking about uh, this operation here as a double matrix multiplication, think about it that these uh, uh, coefficients are kind of stored in uh, the matrix. Uh, how? Imagine that both rows and columns of this matrix are indexed by variables x, y, z for the rows and x, y, z for the columns. Then this element corresponds to x, x because it's both row x and column x. So this will be the coefficient corresponding to x squared. Here y squared and z squared. And there, here, we have the row x and column y, so this will correspond to the product of x and y, and so will this one, but, well, yx is the same as xy. So this is why you get the coefficient twice this one, which is exactly the same as twice this one, because of the symmetry. So think about uh, this matrix as a kind of handy storage of coefficients for the form. Uh, and this is called a quadratic form. And you have seen already quadratic forms in two variables. And now we work with quadratic forms in three variables. So the thing is that we are supposed to rewrite this expression into this expression. And, uh, well, the, the requirement is that these variables S t and u, now we have three new variables, sometimes less but never more, um, see it as a change of variables. So this is a kind of description of what it means that these variables are independent. Um, so all these variables s, t and y, uh, uh, sorry, s, t and u are um, kind of expressed with help of x, y and z in such a way that this is a valid change of variables. If you don't know now what change of variables is, don't worry, at the moment you need it, you will know, and then you can come back to this video. And now you see that I have deleted here, uh, the, uh, that you have to do this in a creative way, because you know, if it's a 3 by 3 matrix or a form in three variables, it is really better to, uh, to uh, keep the systematic way of working. And now I will show you how such a systematic way of working 
looks. So here is our matrix. Well, it is just an example, right? So here is a three by three matrix. You see that here I used a parenthesis. Sometimes you write brackets, sometimes parenthesis. It's not, not a difference. It's just a, a different graphical form of representing a matrix. So you see that this matrix is clearly symmetric. These elements are equal to each other. These are equal to each other and these are equal to each other. So now I will first show you how to create the quadratic form in three variable, uh, variables corresponding to this matrix. And then I will complete the square on this form. So uh, here, don't worry about this matrix multiplication. If you know how to do this, do this. If you don't know, just look at this matrix as on storage of coefficients. So first, we take coefficient at x squared from here. Then we add 8 times y squared and 12 times z squared. So we are done with all those pure, not mixed uh, uh, variables. And now we uh, proceed to the mixed so here, x, y, uh, we, we will get minus 6, minus 6 is minus 12, right? Then this place stands for x, z, because this is first row and third column. So first variable and third variable. And the coefficient is the sum of these two, which is minus 12. And at the end, you get a plus 16yz, because it is the uh, second row and the third column. So it corresponds to the product of second and third variables. So this is our form. So by now, I hope that you know, that you understand how to read uh, the quadratic form from its symmetric matrix. And now it's time to complete the square. And the systematic way looks like, uh, as follows. First, I pick all the terms which contain variable x and I put these terms together. And you see also that I have uh, factored out factor 6. And this is why I, I get in this parenthesis just x squared minus twice xy minus twice xz. And the uh, remaining terms are just copied from here. Then uh, what I do next, you see I have here the common uh, factor minus 2x in these two terms. So I factor it out and the rest is just uh, copied. And you see what I got here. I get x squared and here I get a doubled product. It is 2x times something. So to complete the square, I just have to add the square of this something, you see? So if I, but of course, afterwards I have to subtract it too, so that I respect my equality sign. So when I add here in this parenthesis the square of y plus z, then I will get x minus y plus z all squared. And then of course I have to subtract six times this expression, because you see that this subtraction was in this parenthesis, so this must be also multiplied by 6, and this is simply being copied. Okay, what I do now, I apply here the formula for the square of um, sum, you see, just this uh, old formula, which you know by now. And don't forget to multiply everything here uh, by minus 6. So this is why you get minus 6, minus 12, and minus 6. So this was application of this formula. In the next step, I just add similar terms. You see, because here I get these two terms are similar, so they add together to plus 2y squared. These two terms are also similar and they add together to plus 6z squared. And these add together to plus 4yz because 16 minus 12 is 4. So now we have, uh, um, we have rewritten this to a quite simple form. And you see what has happened here. I have already a coefficient times a square of my first variable. It will be my s, right? Uh, and here I have just two variables left. And we know how to do uh, completing the squares if we just have two variables. So this is just done in a 
normal way. So what I done, what I have done here is factored out uh, two, and then I get y squared plus two z squared because well I I go for perfect square. You see this right? And what I have left here outside this parenthesis is four z squared because I get. 2z squared plus 4z squared is 6z squared. And these two elements are completely included in this perfect square. And this perfect square is of course y plus z all squared. So you see that we indeed got uh, some coefficient a equal to 6 times s squared plus some other coefficient b equal to 2 times t squared plus the third coefficient c equal to 4 times u squared. u is simply equal to z. And this type of sums where you sum some variables with coefficients is called a linear combination. So what we got here is a linear combination of squares of the new variables. And again c this here as a change of variables from x, y, z to s, t, u. Just some words about the applications. You see here in this quadratic form, if it's written in this way, it can be recognized as so-called positive definite form. And what does this mean? This means that the values of this form are always non-negative, regardless the values of x, y and z, and are only equal to zero if all the x, y and z are equal to zero at the same time. You see, it, was, it would be difficult to, uh, to determine if our form is written in this this way, but if it's written as a kind of linear combination uh, of squares of real numbers, then it is clear here that this uh, expression is always non-negative, because we have just squares of real numbers, which are obviously non-negative, uh, multiplied by some positive constants and added together. So completing the square helps us determine whether our form is positive definite or not. And more on this subject you can uh, learn in these uh, two courses. And here I copied a list of some problems and some uh, topics uh, which, which are about uh, forms, positive and negative definite, from this first course and from the second one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.